A great way to achieve program flow control in C++ is the use of menus and switches. Let's say we have a program like our good old rectangle program where we want to enter the length and width and then decide whether or not we want to calculate simply the area or the perimeter or both. We would use a menu of choices and that's what we see here. You'll notice that a menu is nothing more than a series of see out statements that provide us with the options we have available for the program. In this case we have three choices, one, two, and three, all designated in the appropriate see out statements. One for area, two for perimeter, three for both. We then have a prompt for a CN statement which tells us to enter the menu number that we wish to exercise when we run this program. And we then have a CN for selection. Now recall, selection was an integer and our choices are integer choices, one, two, or three. So for this CN statement, when we run the program, we would enter one, two, or three, and then hit return. This is the menu. Now, in C++, we have a construct called a switch. Now the switch is a keyword. It works this way. Notice we have the word switch, and in parentheses, the variable name selection. We then have an open and closed squiggly bracket for the switch. Inside the switch, we have cases which correspond to the menu selections that we were allowed to make. So for example, you'll see case one with a colon. We go area equals length times width. We see out the area, and then we have a break statement. The break makes sure that the other cases aren't used. You'll notice we also have case 2 where we find the perimeter. We also have a default case. Let's say that we had three menu choices and we entered a 5. Since there would be no corresponding case for 5, we would hit default and it would give us an error statement. In this case the proverbial oops and we also have a break there. The return zero and close squiggly then would complete this program. Now you might ask, what happened to case three? Well, when you write this program and get it to work for the first time, you have to add your own case three using the patterns that I've shown you in this presentation. Now let's take one closer look at a case statement. You'll notice that when we go switch selection, selection is the same variable name we used for our CN statement with the menu. We have an open squiggly. We start with the word case, there's a space, and then the number, and we have a colon, not a semicolon. We then have our lines of code that do whatever it is we want that case to do. Note, you may or may not use this particular menu switch video before you've learned how to use functions, but when we do functions, remember, we can always call a function from this area as well as write explicit lines of code that we want the program to execute. Okay, next we have break and notice that break has a semicolon. The break makes sure that it only runs the case that matches the input or selection that we make. All the cases will be similar to this but we'll have a different number with each one. The last thing we saw was a default case, and this is the one that says, hey, if you didn't select anything else, it'll automatically go to this one. This is useful because it'll give us a capability to put in an error statement, which would tell the program user, hey, you didn't enter a valid option. And then, of course, we have a break for that default as well. That last squiggly bracket is the one that closes the switch. Okay. We're ready to use menus and switches, and this gives us a great opportunity to set up programs where we want to go and do specific things that are all exclusive of the other uh, capabilities in the program. And we'll make quite a bit of use of this when we do our geometry program.